What's up everyone, Vu of Envu Films, back with another video. And today I gotta make this video with my son in the background eating cereal because gotta make some money. And the $5 I make out of this YouTube video from ad revenue, will probably buy him a new box of cereal for me to continue to just feed him that while I do other things. So yeah, today I'm gonna show you how to look professional before showing up to a shoot. Generally speaking, when you go out there into the real world, into the business world, Everything is bullshit, right? When you go to a job interview, you gotta wear, you know, shirt, jacket, tie, the whole nine yards. You gotta make a bunch of crap about how good you were in school, about how you're a go-getter, you're a great multitasker, you are a team player, all of that nonsense. And the same thing goes when you're going out there as a videographer to shoot some, to do some client work. Here you have my setup. I'm gonna be honest with you, I could probably film everything and anything with just this, barring lighting and other audio equipment. But generally speaking, this is all I need to film everything. And to be honest, I probably film a lot better with just this period. You know, I don't need all this additional crap. Um, if I wanna go out there and film B-rolls, if I wanna film the doc following someone around, this is all I need. Yes, I'm almost 40, Asian piece of trash, cannot see for crap. Um, this Sony screen is hot garbage. We all know Sony has some pretty crappy screens. However, we also know that Sony has great autofocus. I've known nothing but Sony cameras since I started doing videography. And the screen is trash, but their autofocus is so good that I trust it. No matter how bad the screen is, no matter how small my Asian eyes are, I know that I have what it is in focus as long as you see the box. So this setup right here is perfect for me. It's just a Sony FX3. You got a Sony 50 millimeter G Master and you have this Ulanzi travel tripod, carbon fiber, high quality. I mean, you know, fluid head, the whole nine yards. And it's tiny, it's compact, it's easy for me to carry. Like I could film a client shoot. I could film my family vacations. I could film weddings. I could film whatever the heck I want with this and I'd be completely happy. However, if I showed up to a freaking client shoot, corporate shoot, with a bunch of big wigs. Up. However, if I show up to a corporate shoot, client shoot, with a bunch of CEO big wigs out there, they're gonna look at this and be like, yo, who is this dude we just grabbed off the street? That's literally what they're gonna do because they get affected by branding, the way things look, marketing, the same way their customers get fooled by their marketing, all right? These CEOs are a bunch of BSers that's how they got to where they are. They BS their wives into marrying them. They BS the employees into, you know, working for them. It's a complete sham. So you need to treat them the way they want to be treated. So you roll up and you got to make sure that you do everything you can to make yourself look like a bigger production than you are. Or you just want to overdress yourself, in this case, your gear, to just keep them at ease and seeing that they they spent, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, ten thousand dollars you know, on you to come here and film whatever it is you're filming for them. You want to immediately show them the value they're getting out of their investment. Because in your mind, you know you could have shown up here with a freaking iPhone and you know, create a banger video for them, and it would have been great on their website, it would have been great on their social media. But they don't really know that yet. They just kind of hired you and you guys gotta show up you got to show up with everything you have on display to keep them at ease. So I'm going to show you the bare minimum crap you should probably do to your camera rig, especially something small like the FX3, to make yourself look more professional. Firstly, I have a Ulanzi Falcam cage on here. It's almost the same color as the FX3. And the reason why I love using Falcam cages is obviously it bulks up the camera a little bit, makes it easier to hold, and it has all these little like attachments that, you know, if I need it, but I am really invested in the Falcam quick release. As you can see, I could just connect this right to my tripod like this and take it right off. Everything I use has a Falcam quick release on it. Now showing up to a client shoot, I want my camera to be even more bulky. So I want a bulkier looking cage and something that stands out a little more than just this matte silver that kind of matches with my FX3. With that, I'm gonna go with this Condor Blue cage. Full disclosure, Condor Blue sent me this because they liked my douchebag videos. So I'm giving them a nice shout out on this video here. But if I want the bulkiest cage possible, I'll get the Condor Blue cage. And of course, it's a really good quality cage.
I'm going to take off this Ulanzi Falcam cage first, and I'm going to install the Condor Blue cage. All right, so now I have the Falcam cage installed. It's a really nice cage, as you can see. It is attached in all angles on this FX3 and all the screw holes around the FX3. There's mounts here, there's mounts on the side, both sides. And of course, it also has the DJI Ronin quick release plate, which I think is a Manfrotto or Arca Swiss. I'm not sure, it's one of those quick release plates here that installs at the bottom of the cage for you to be able to quickly attach and, you know, attach and detach your camera to your gimbal, as well as any tripod that has the same mount, which is a lot of tripods. Um, so yeah, this is the Condor Blue cage. Because it's bulkier, it's not as nice handling as the Falcon cage that I use, but as you can see, it automatically gives this camera a lot of girth. Girth is great for a lot of things. Looking professional camera work, and in the bedroom, girth makes you look a certain way. But at the end of the day, just like cameras, it's all about how you perform with the gear that you have, not the gear itself. Speaking as an Asian person, I know this all too well. The bedroom, not the camera. Now, it also has this little thing here to attach to your camera. This allows you to control the camera with the top handle, the record button. Very nice touch, um, Condor Blue. So yeah, I believe you do have to do something to you know, have everything connected first. It's not just automatic. You have to go in your camera and make some settings. But overall, very nice that there's a record button on your top handle so you can do your filming, whatever. Next thing, because I'm about to bulk up this camera setup, and I'm gonna go take that even further by putting a bigger lens on here. And yes, this is a G Master lens. And you know, we all know that G Master lenses are the best of the best in terms of Sony lenses. But these clients don't know anything. You know, a lot of them have no idea what G Masters are. All they see is this small lens. And most of our nice G Master Primes, 24, 35, 50, they're small. So I'm gonna bust out this Tamron lens. This Tamron 35-150 F2, F2.8 lens. We know this is already big, long, and girthy. And then if you do this, it gets even more girthy. I'm not gonna go any further into that. So go ahead and put this here on. So now this thing is really bulky and heavy, looking kind of nice. Put this down. Although I know this tripod could probably handle the weight of this setup, no problem. Um, we're gonna put it aside just because it's gonna look really funny small little tripod with this big ass setup. So now instead of calling these tripods, I'm gonna call it stick. You know, you go on them film sets, people gonna be like, yo, grab those sticks. They mean tripod. I had someone try to clown on me because I, I called, you know, a tripod a tripod. It's just so stupid. Um, society, everything, all the BS that we do put ourselves through to look certain way to conform, whatever. It's just so dumb. But uh, you gotta do what you gotta do to survive out on these bullshitty streets. Um, yeah, so I'm go ahead and put some of these things aside, clean up my workspace. <laughs> so to further enhance this camera real quick, you know, and it's a lot better to show clients what you're working on on a monitor or even another bigger monitor on the outside is, you know, you don't want to be showing them stuff on this tiny little screen on the Sony camera that looks like absolute dumpster trash. I have here an Atomos Ninja 5 Plus. So yeah, you can record ProRes RAW with your Sony camera on here, but uh, we're not doing that today. It's supposed to just slide in, but for some reason it's not today. Just slides in like this, and you install the HDMI cable and the HDMI cable connection. There's a HDMI cable holder here from Falcam for you to use, but because I have this little skin flap from 
the uh, Sony FX3 still attached. I can't really use this HDMI uh, cable holder. So I'm gonna just leave it as is. I'm gonna just plug in the HDMI. This is just for example purposes, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the tripod. And this is my stick of choice. This is the Leo Photo Ranger LS284 CEX. Carbon fiber, compact tripod. And uh, this tripod is very legit, even though you probably never heard of Leo Photo before, um, at least not in YouTube anyway. But uh, yeah, this tripod is super sturdy, super strong. Um, light for what it is a very nice strong video head and look at the size difference between the uh ulanzi travel carbon and the leo photo so you want to show up to a client shoot with some bigger guns such as this leo photo uh tripod links are in the description below if you're looking into something like this this is the bv10 model uh, in my opinion does everything great it has twist locks so you know, that is an acquired taste. And this is as high as it goes, which is pretty tall. Um, it doesn't have that additional center section to uh, to make it taller like some other tripods out there. But uh, this gives you an idea of how tall it gets. And of course you can adjust the, um, the leveling on the tripod head. And again, completely fluid head. Very nice, highly recommended if this is what you're looking for, looking for a bigger tripod. Um, pain in the butt is when you do adjustments. If you wanna do like a minor height adjustment, you're gonna to have to adjust all three legs, which kind of sucks, but if that's not something you're concerned about, great tripod. So put the camera on this tripod, but of course I have the quick release plate going the wrong way. So I gotta um, detach this quick release and put it on the right way. Another cool thing about this Condor Blue cage, and a lot of cage has this, is that it comes with all these Allen keys attached magnetically. So if you ever need an Allen key, you just you know pull it out. The only problem is, in my experience, with pretty much cages of all brands that come with tools and stuff attached to uh, attached to it magnetically. I always end up losing those tools, whether it be like those little flathead uh, coins or these Allen keys. I go on a shoot, come home and be like, yo, where's my Allen key that was on here? It just falls off very easily. The magnets aren't that strong. And you know, it's just one of those things you gotta deal with. Um, now I have the camera on the tripod. Really good to go, as you can see, solid. It's locked down, it's not going anywhere. You know, fluid head. As you can see, it's very front heavy. A lot of different things you could do. You could even attach an additional battery to your camera, you know, V-mount, whatever, it's up to you. I don't really care about that right now. I don't have a problem switching out batteries. When you're doing a sit down interview shoot, it's not like you don't have to stop and make corrections to the person. There's plenty of time to do a quick battery switch. You know you are going to need filters on your lens. Now, the biggest mistake a lot of corporate videographers do, and I see this a lot in corporate videos that I've watched, is they don't put any filters on their photography glass, on their um, little DSLR mirrorless camera. And what happens is it's super sharp. Everyone likes super sharp videos, right? 4K, 8K, whatever. The problem is it shows a lot of imperfections in people's skin. And some of these corporate shoots they might not have budget for makeup um, or that's something that uh, they didn't care to do. Whatever it is, it is kind of your job to suggest it. But if for some reason they just, like the men don't put makeup on and especially the women, they might put makeup on, but it might not be professional makeup. People just aren't models, you know, not, you know, and not even models have imperfect skin. The reason why they look good is because there's airbrush, there's Photoshop, there's the whole nine yards. To be honest, I can make a whole tutorial on how to do touch up people's faces on YouTube. I'm not doing that right now. So you're gonna want to put filters on your lens, such as mist filters, other diffusion filters, to soften up these people's skin. First, you can't have hard, harsh ash lighting. Make sure that lighting is nice and diffused. 
But with that, you could easily just put on one of these like free well filter kits, put it on there, these magnetic filter kits with mist and all that stuff, which is what I use all the time. But again, you're trying to show up big time. And that's where I recommend this Freewell Iger map box. Freewell is by far one of the most innovative, probably the most innovative filter company out there. And it seems right now they'll come out with some stuff and every other company, including bigger companies like Polar Pro would copy them. They, you know, they're the ones that originated the magnetic filter and they come out with all these different types of versatile magnetic ND filter systems, vers uh, variable ND systems um, with mist attachments. So their matte box is solid AF. I'm telling you that right now. Like the whole kit. Um, if you wanna check out an actual documentary that I use this matte box with and this tripod, let's go ahead and check out this video up here, over there, wherever. It's a documentary about me taking care of my son. It's very basic, it's nothing crazy, but if you wanna see some footage examples of what this looks like, please take a look at that video. And so this is the map box, and as it is, it's not going to attach to anything. It's a very nice high quality map box. It has some carbon fiber accents on it. I love carbon fiber accents because I'm a ricer. A ricer is one of those dudes who likes those import cars, fast and furious type. And yeah, I used to be one of those. So it comes with a bunch of filter threads you could use. This is an 82 millimeter filter thread lens. So naturally you wanna put an 82 millimeter, 82 millimeter ring on. So you just kind of attach the ring, it's nice and tight. And then the mat box simply attaches with these latches and then you tighten it down with the screw on the side. So there's a screw here you tighten it with and it just latches on like this. And then you just latch it on and then you tighten it down and now you're good. And if you wanna take it off, you simply twist a little bit and then you take a latch and it comes right off. That's how easy it is to install. Um, get that thing back on there. Bam. This particular kit comes with, so if you just want straight up clear image, you just leave it as is. You got your map box, you know, hiding the sun if you need to, but you want some mist. This is a quarter mist. I usually use one eighth, but the kit that Freewell sent me has this quarter mist. So pretty much the mist just inserts in here magnetically, just like so. You wanna take it out, you just wanna pull it out, you know? So same thing, same thing you do when you don't wanna conceive a child. I know I'm about to recycle a joke here, but you just pull out. You pull out the mist if you don't want it, and then you put it in if you do want it, really quick. Just, just magnetically attached. And then you need an ND, say you're shooting outside and you don't wanna be an unprofessional looking D-bag trash. You could have the CPL, this thing comes with a circular polarizer already in it. And if you want ND, there's a one to five stop ND. There's also a six to nine stop. You put the ND filter on like so. It magnetically attaches to this little plate. This little plate here with the ND filter, the CPL filter, it goes right on top of the matte box. It clips in, you lock it down. That is that. And if you need to adjust the ND strength, there's this little knob that you turn to adjust the ND, you know, close it down, open it. Um, there's other, obviously because it is a matte box design, there's other things you can put in here, other types of filters, things of the nature, you could just stick onto that slot above. You just remove the ND filter and you put these other stuff in. So here's the ND32 that I have. And this is another type of filter. This is a soft gradient filter. So this is generally used if, let's say you're shooting outside and the sky is blown out. You could put this gradient filter in and just have the darker part of this filter darken up the sky, giving, bringing out like the detail of the sky. And this bottom part has nothing on it. So the person is properly exposed as well. So yeah. Automatically, already, you see that 
this kit is looking a lot more professional, looking a lot more solid. Again, I don't need all this, and most of you probably don't need all this, but you just want to show yourself in a certain light. You just want to come in dressed properly for this interview. You want to dress up your cameras properly for this interview. You want to show up with just a bare naked camera. Even though you know you can create the same end product with your blank camera as you do with this rigged up camera. You just want to show up and make yourself look a certain way to make these big wigs feel more comfortable about what they're spending money on. It's an unboxing experience basically because you are delivering digital stuff you're delivering video is not like a tangible thing that you can hold you know like this matte box itself comes in a nice box when you pull the box out it's like this like slow tight smooth feel it has nice foam inside this is an overall very pleasant good unboxing experience and if you're spending money on this and i'm not sure exactly what this costs probably like three three hundred bucks or something like that links in the description below you want to know immediately that you spent money on something. It's like, you know, I don't necessarily agree with it. You know, a person like me, they could have sent me this in a plastic bag. And as long as the actual product is nice and solid, which it is, I'm good to go. Um, but imagine buying like an iPhone 15 for like a thousand bucks. And then it comes in like a foam, some foam and wrapped in plastic bag. You open it and your phone is there. You know, you do, you get that a lot when you buy like refurbished and used stuff. Um, you know, it's like, damn, I spent thousand dollars for this. Um, this is you providing your client with an unboxing experience. At the end of the day, their deliverable is going to be what it is. It's going to be to your skill level to be, um, the deliverable is going to be up to your skill level, but you want to give them that nice feel first when you arrive, you set up and it's like, damn, I paid money for this professional ass setup. It is what it is, man. It's, it's how the world works. It's society. Um, people just like the presentation, you know, presentation is a lot, you know, like I'd rather eat at a local Chinese food carry out than, you know, some expensive ass restaurant with a small ass piece of steak like this, all nicely well present, you know, well presented, um, you know, got this waiter coming out with nice service and all that stuff. That's not me, you know what I mean? To me, the takeout food just tastes better and this is not gonna fill me up and it costs a lot of money. But some people like that kind of crap, not me. And I like this, it's cool as crap, you know? I'm glad that I have this nice matte box system so when I do actually need a matte box, I have one and if I just need something just for show, I have one. You know what I mean? So with that, with that said, guys, for all you beginners out there, for all of you who are going out to shoot um, a nice commercial uh, shoot, you know, make your camera look as douchey as possible, okay? And the clients will feel very confident in what they're paying for right off the bat before you even deliver a damn thing. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed some of these products that I showed and, uh, Links in the description below, and you know that I'm not going to recommend you nothing on this channel unless I will actually use them. So this is all solid shit right here. Like and subscribe. Till next time, lighten up. Hey, man, that light so tiny. Yeah, this is a Godox Lightman's LC30 by. I'm really trying to lighten up the load when I'm filming weddings. Oh, my God, that unprofessional. If you want to be the best. If you want to be professional, you need to use Aperture LH60 Act. I'm an old piece of trash. I'm not trying to blow out my back carrying heavy ass lights everywhere. No, man. You're trapped at high quality, not heavy. I use those lights for two years. They're great, but they're bulky and heavy. Let me show you. I do, man. Bro, you are right, Sally? You just blew out your back and applied an earthy coffee stain LUT to your drawers. I'm gonna have to visit a chiropractor. No, man, I think I need to go B&H get massage. Damn, I know B&H photo does massages. No, man, I go butt and hoe for and massage. Full body, what happy ending. Only $29.99.